Hello, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma, and my name is Dina. Thank you so much for joining us in the channel. Every interaction helps the channel to grow. Even if you just want to watch the messages, just your mere viewing will help me to tap into your energies and the messages you need to hear. Take the messages that resonate with the rest. This is a collective, timeless reading. Reading the energies and seeing what spirit wants to talk about today. Did some pre shuffles. There's something about a heart expansion and the authority to pursue one's own desires. We did see the divine feminine. Let's get a few cards out. How is everyone today? Feel free to call in any ancestors. And let me split communication with the earth elementals, perhaps. Uh, maybe you have some communication necessary on some material issue whether that's physical contract, uh, manifestation, your home, communication still on the bottom. So we're just going to let all the cards kind of find their way. Take that one. So the first one popping out is Third Eye Chakra using your intuition to guide you and guide your perceptions. You're looking for clarity on an issue since we saw that communication. Ooh, that one wanted to come out. That is soul time, number 40, which covers dreamscape, alone time, even if you have a little commute to work where you get in your head, where you're vibing with music or whatever you do. Mine is gardening, if you can't tell by these awful fingernails. Uh, meditation, of course, with soul time as well. <clears throat> then we get 30. Integration. Supporting. It says the frequency of integration supports our um, embrace of every aspect of ourselves, allowing what we perceive as positive and what we perceive as negative to harmonize in a balanced symphony of life. And we do have perception here in third eye chakra. So what's under the deck now? Consciousness. Nice. <clears throat> Let me read consciousness and perception because this is... We're definitely tapping into some intuition on something to think and feel below the surface of something we're looking deeper into a matter mm -hmm. the frequency of perception supports our natural curiosity moving us beyond our comfort zone to find the edges of what we perceive as real and to take a good hard deep look at it in consciousness, the frequency of consciousness supports our ability to focus our attention on all the multidimensional aspects that show up so that we can include them in our reality, which is definitely what Third Eye Chakra is talking about too. Why don't I just read them all then? Third Eye Chakra says, the Third Eye Chakra indigo flower of life supports our intuition and our inner knowing, our imagination and our psychic powers. So the Third Eye if you did not know, corresponds to the pineal gland at the center of the brain, and it has rods and cones, the same things that create sight in our own eyes. And it's said that the, the third eye sees in 360 degrees, and if you've done any, oh, 444, if you've done any exploration on the hermetic principles, the emerald tablets, Toth, that green light on that one. 
Uh, the third eye is really talking about above, below, inside, outside, the microcosm and the macrocosm all being interconnected and indivisible from each other and also being harmonic octaves of each other so all things mimic each other so the spiral of life is okay I'm getting so many references with that third eye chakra the pineal gland is also shaped like a pine cone and you'll often see the staff with the pine cone on it you'll see the pine cone imagery so many different places and it also represents, when you see the pine cone opening, you'll see that that's a spiral going down with that perfect center. And then all of the little flakes start to open and release the seeds. So yeah, there's, um, there's something that wants to be talked about here. Let's, instead of going to this deck, oh, that's interesting, right on the bottom of the deck, third eye chakra. Okay, just for a second here. Green light on the third eye chakra. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, maybe we will use this deck. It was in my hands for a reason. So you may be perceiving some red flags and having some unanswered prayers or you're remembering times that, that you did. And you're needing to reflect and integrate <clears throat> your expanded awareness and your expanded consciousness with your perceptions you're supposed or you're best served to meditate or reflect or get yourself in the groove with anything that helps you to integrate any negativity any lower vibrational energies somebody may have been trying to get a reaction and this may have to do <clears throat> excuse me on friday <clears throat> we had the Daily Dharma talked about a little bit of somebody, uh, I can't remember how it came out, but anyways, that kind of came through for myself over the weekend, so I thought it was talking about a situation that had occurred, and it was more prophetic than I realized, and so here I am thinking that that there is there's something to be integrated here and in the pre shuffles as well I'll go into this I pre shuffled the Kuan Yin deck and the Kali deck and Kuan Yin oops, and one fell off the back the Lotus Throne fell off the back and on the front Tai Chi Rising was under the deck so we'll take those two the Lotus Throne talks about your spiritual awareness and spiritual authority and that your enlightenment is the enlightenment that is shown through the divine itself now not that we can't misinterpret these messages but that perception is where we sort those things out tai chi rising talks about the elevated consciousness and the the shakti rising and really integrating all of your lessons and perceptions to filter them in appropriate ways so that instead of spiraling down into the old pits of despair or whatever um, or into old habits old addictions whatever your your uh, Achilles heel issue is in this lifetime Tai Chi rising isn't clinging to those old issues it's witnessing something that could drag you down just by focusing on it and choosing very intentionally to refocus your energy on something that like this soul time anything you can channel your passions through channel your energies and thereby transmute those energies those lower energies that would weigh you down into those experiences that you want and need it's the pursuit of joy and happiness so instead of getting caught up in anything that may have recently happened to you or in concerning yourself if, so, if something else is coming your way somebody's just trying to get a reaction and if you don't react then they get no fuel building confidence work on yourself reclaim your power 
maybe somebody wasn't at their best recently and they have some lessons to learn and I have mad respect for you is coming out so whoever challenged you is earning or you've earned some respect 1010 when I said that but it says tread carefully here <clears throat> and then there's something else so I'm feeling like this legit card is talking about your perception uh, don't let anyone sway your your discernment as long as you're not influencing anyone else your judgment <clears throat> don't gaslight yourself into not believing your intuition let the cycles play out and stay humble the time to act is now but I feel like uh, there's action that this green light is referring to you know what to do um, because with confidence and expanded consciousness you understand that you're being challenged because you're getting close to some type of finish line and this is somehow interfering with someone else's idea of what you should or shouldn't be doing yeah and behind consciousness we do have earth so you're bringing something from your awareness uh, and there's delight I knew delight was there <clears throat> what's behind delight remembrance and passion so yeah there's an opportunity to channel your passions in a conscious way to materialize your better manifestation right so you're remembering how to do how to do this you're letting your passions lead the way and your delight and if there are only one or two things going really well in your life and a bunch going bad dwelling on those negative aspects is not going to help you to raise your vibration whereas if those one or two things if you can invest some time effort and energy in that direction then you can absolutely start feeling better and when you feel better more solutions present themselves more opportunities are there because of your your just pure ability to perceive of them because you're looking all around yourself you're not looking down in some kind of abyss that doesn't serve anyone been out in the yard all day <clears throat> I don't have allergies something's definitely in my throat so maybe somebody needs to speak up maybe somebody needs to hydrate okay so we've got a lot a lot here to work with let's go ahead and move on under the deck over here we had in the hand the universe is your partner this is the shamanic shaman's dream oracle oh and I did want to tell you about the Kal Kali deck underneath I had on the pre shuffle we see Bagla Mukti again my pronunciation is probably way off you know me <laughs> 23 yes yeah, so we're seeing that she has someone's severed tongue in her hand these are pretty graphic images because Kylie doesn't mess around uh, and then she's got her scepter in the other hand her golden she's like in a temple it looks like to me with a golden sun coming in through a, an enormous round window like it's a literal temple and I'm seeing all these golden and sacral colors um, talking about having your um, your will center and your desire centers in sync and there's that lotus showing your wisdom again so you're standing in your truth and your authority and your spiritual wisdom and you re you've rendered someone speechless is what I'm hearing and uh, so under the deck now we have stars in the sky limitless possibilities so as you allow yourself to focus on what is going right and all the love that you have and not anything that's going wrong 
we're seeing a whole stack pop out. I'll take them because there's some good ones here. So on the initial, I'm seeing Beloved with Soul Contract. Let's put them out this way. Number two, Radical Acceptance, Beloved. So radical acceptance of yourself, of your position, of your present tense, of your present moment, of what you have and haven't done and accomplished. It's all in the journey, right? Number seven, covenant, sacred contract. So there's definitely a, a turning of tides. We've been getting this sacred contract lately. And I'm feeling like this is what you're now focusing on, not the soul contracts that were uh, sticky and enmeshed, but the ones that are drawing you closer to what you love about yourself, integrating what you've perhaps questioned about yourself in new ways so that you can appreciate your whole self and someone that appreciates your whole entire self. Then we're seeing number one, a tidy house. So now we have one and two, clarity and organization. This is all about keeping yourself um, clear, lucid, um, whether it's your literal dreams or, or the desires that you hold. The universe is our partner in this. We saw that universe in the hand. There's something you're getting very clear about what you want, what you need, and that's drawing that to you, and it's clearing up a lot of confused energy along the way. And because of this, because there's not that scattered energy, there's that focus and that good feeling thought following good feeling thought, there's this element of a tightening of the, um, the, the pendulum as it swings, you know, side to side, east to west, north to south, as the changing tides and winds of life move around us and swirl around us, the less that we get pushed towards responding to conditions and the more we just um, we utilize those as stepping stones 1717 it's that investing in the star in that energy of hope and renewal energy in healing in the moment in this as we become clear and organized with that we're leveling up and the vacillations is that the word it kind of our energy pulls closer as our energy as our Merkaba field expands the um, the vibrational um, variance between uh, let's say the lower scale and the higher scale becomes less so it's less shadow and light and more like well I'm all of this so instead of saying, oh, I'm this right now and I'm this right now, we're all of this. And that's why it expands, because we're integrating it all in. So then we have number 10, deep diver, diving into a task. Yes. So something very cool happening. Number 10 reduces again to a 1, so we're getting a confirmation. And we saw 10, 10. And then we have dragon's horde protecting the future. Number 12. And... Closing door completion number five. So yes, I'm feeling that this is closing a chapter on this old sacred contract, drawing in the new sacred contract with something that's beloved, whether that's an actual person or deepening a connection or a beloved job or investing in your passions or even investing time and effort in the beautification of your home or your yard or in nature in some type of a way there's something in that jeweled web connectivity so someone also to share these things with and seeing these as um a bunch of little fairies almost like I don't know if anybody here has seen Fantasia. I'm a Fantasia nerd. I love it. Um, during the Tchaikovsky, I believe, skit, they have a bunch of little winter fairies. Or is it the Four Seasons? It could be the Uh I'm no expert. I'm um, just passionately curious, I guess, right? So with these energies, there's this element of having been... Um, 
stalled in your process with Dragon's Horde. There was something not moving, but you gathered energy, you gathered courage, you gathered inspiration, you gathered information and wisdom. And now you're being told your energy is, is really, um, because of the amount and the depth that you've traversed in your introspective times, in your soul time, you've been able to create something amazing here on some level. And with these fairies and the turning of the seasons and we saw the wheel of the year, um, like for, for instance, and you can take this as a symbol for whatever you're dealing with, <clears throat> Right now, I've moved into a new place. I put a bunch of plants in last year and some temporary beds. And now I'm getting in there and I'm seeing things as they grow. And I'm like, okay, this is bigger at this house than this one's smaller than I thought it would be. So switching things around, putting new things in there. And it's the idea that these things are going to grow. They're going to change. And I'm seeing now this timeline I'm seeing through timelines in a way, and what I mean by that is I'm remembering the past home the, um, and the planting of them and now the emergence, and then I'm going to envision as I'm looking at these and moving things around how they're going to grow and change, and I'm anticipating, <clears throat> and I'm giving things more or less room, more or less light, and I'm, I'm trimming, you know, doing these things to accommodate and make space and then create the future with every little dirt and piece and speck of anything, microbes, rocks, all of these are just kind of in this huge dance. And it's like this clarity and organization when you're doing things, whether it's moving around numbers on a spreadsheet at work or uh, moving around dishes in a sink or whatever type of mundane thing helps you keep this clarity and organization. If you don't allow yourself to become too distracted, 2222, then you're really diving deep into connecting to just the sacred flow of your own creativity and the generation of your life and that beauty that you're going to have to look at or you're going to be able to look at in your future. So, yeah, I'm anticipating the growth of the future and all of the things I'm investing in rather than remembering any type of slights from the past because gardening just draws me into that, to that anticipation. And so I'm so, I mean, although it's, it's impossible for me to do this and to not look into other timelines. I'm also so grounded and literally present in that moment. Hours pass and I don't I don't know how that happens, right? And so I'll tell you that that the Kali card Bhaglamukti number 23 talks about negativity and that hater vibe. It says burning golden light of divine protection she arrests the flow of negativity, particularly that of our own making. She is divine intervention in sacred activity. She transforms our karma from that which hinders our joy to that which creates true happiness and bliss for ourselves and all beings. As you seek refuge in her, you're protected from gossip, slander, and any form of negativity from others. A positive turning of the tide of, of fortune is predicted. So this is, it's like um, conjuring through being magnetic to your abundance and to the love that you're calling in. Um, what's under jeweled web? Empty well, time to replenish. And the perfect storm, the courage to step into your life. And then feast of plenty, choices and their consequences. Yes, yes choice it's always a choice what to focus on it's a choice all day every day and if you feel like you're trapped at a job because of your of your bills then your choice is to potentially try to reduce the amount of bills that you have right and to make more money um, maybe 
try to think about how the things that you really enjoy doing, the things that you're really good at, the things that you can see through timelines itself, these are things that you were kind of born to do and to set in motion. Perhaps what you're here to do doesn't exist yet and you're the one that is creating the organization and has the clarity of mind to create this sacred contract and spirits working with the, with you as you have this surrender and this radical acceptance of what you love you can dive deep into that task and literally your work will be play so you have all the tools and resources to do so but you felt maybe caught up and I I suspect it's because there's been this door that's needed to be closed maybe you needed help closing that door um, but yeah there's a need to restore and replenish and if you dive deep into that empty well and think about why you're depleted what is what are you sacrificing unnecessarily <clears throat> that's a 16 there it's time to replenish is the tower card in the tarot and it looks like um kind of looks like the eye of a dragon like a reptilian eye or an iguana eye you know how they kind of move around like that there's something there's something there and like this fiery Euroboros energy that snake that eats its own tail yeah it's something about um going down that that negative spiral of negativity is an empty well. And we are the only ones that can ascend the sacred throne by um, investing in what, what is healthy and good for us. Living in a healthy, tidy home is good for us. Having a healthy, expressive, and happy mind is good for us. If you can't think happy thoughts on a regular basis, something is definitely amiss in your energy. And so you're the one who has the cap capacity to save yourself from that outcome. So, 27 minutes, let's just get a down message and we will call this good for the day. Yeah, so what is the new contract that you guys are signing up on? It's, it could be a job for many, it could literally be people coming into your life because we've got this jeweled web connectivity which reminds me too I didn't say this but I was feeling the jeweled web is always to me a reference of the other light workers in the world the other like-minded souls and also those that you connect with on a heartfelt basis across the internet on whatever social media platforms or or however that happens for you Connectivity is a powerful way to integrate self-acceptance and self-awareness. When you find like-minded souls, you trust and understand that other people do see things in a similar way, and it helps you to expand the various differences between those that are alike with you, which will help you to dig deep and dive deep and recognize how others that seemingly are so vastly different from you in consciousness are ultimately also one and the same because we may all approach this very differently one person wants to um, go the route of government one person wants to go the route of off-grid those are very different but ultimately both people just want to have you know they want what's best for everyone under here 41 I love this one when a superior man hears of the Tao he immediately begins to embody it when an average man hears of the Tao he half believes it half doubts it when a foolish man hears of the Tao he laughs out loud if he didn't laugh it wouldn't be the Tao Thus it is said, the path into the light seems dark. The path forward seems to go back. The direct path seems long. True power seems weak. True purity seems tarnished. True steadfastness seems changeable. True clarity 
seems obscure. The greatest art seems unsophisticated. The greatest love seems indifferent. The greatest wisdom seems childish. The Tao is nowhere to be found, yet it nourishes and completes all things. So yes, you have all of this accumulated knowledge, potential, skill. You were born to do something here, and you've de you dove into something so deeply that you understand the flow of consciousness and what that means to you, and you set up those sacred contracts to accommodate your highest path and expression. And this is what those those hater people would do. They see your pathway and they're like, oh you're naive. Oh you don't get it. You don't you don't do enough. You don't push enough. You're not going to a job every day. But you can work hard all day. Or you can also go to a work place every day and play Scrabble and twiddle your thumbs all day and pretend to work. I've seen both things happen. People that don't do anything may have a purpose in that. So it's not for us to judge, it's for us to stay in our own lane and to perceive what we need to integrate so that we can feel amazing. Number six, the Tao is called the Great Mother. Empty, like the well, yet inexhaustible. It gives birth to infinite worlds. It is always present within you. You can use it any way you want. The perception of, an, of a slight or a betrayal or gossip is just that. It's a perception. It doesn't mean anything about anybody. So this deep diver and in integration here with the jeweled web and connectivity is also talking about that our connectivity to other people's opinions can be as, as connected as... Um, as anything else, it's up to us to understand which things are ringing, ringing true for us because deep diver and integration to me is talking about the deeper we dive, the higher we rise. And so we're integrating our shadow self and we're integrating our spirituality and our spiritual authority and our consciousness is definitely manifesting into a better quality of life which precedes the material evidence. 72, when they lose their sense of awe, people turn to religion. When they no longer trust themselves, they begin to depend upon authority. Therefore, the master steps back so that people won't be confused. He teaches without teaching so that people will have nothing to learn. I find myself doing that sometimes. It's not for us to point out what somebody else does in error. And if it's uh, something that we feel they just made a mistake, we can say, oh, did you mean this thing here? I always called this something else, right? We can say that without correcting them. We can, I mean, take it as you will. But there's, there's this, urge here to to stay in that childlike sense of awe, wonder, and purity, and delight, and passion to be, what did it say? The greatest wisdom seems childish. So when you're in that place of awe and wonder, channeling your, your passions or your hobbies, hours on end, Somebody will pay for that manifestation. Whatever you're putting into, into the earth or into form, don't let others try to tell you that you don't have what it takes. Somebody's trying to be a bubble burster. <laughs> and that's all I have for you. I think that it's, it spoke for itself. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming along for the ride today, sharing your vibe, getting to know the tribe here. So definitely stay, stay blessed, stay lucid, tap into the power of your dreams, rebel black sheep, clear your energy and space.
especially if you wanted someone to chase you. Don't play games. You're getting the green light to go ahead. All right, so like, share, comment, subscribe if this resonated with you. Got IJKL on the bottom, brick house. Dark features, eyes, hair, or complexion. Secret admirer wanted you to chase them. But they're feeling those Venus energies, attraction, magnetism, beauty, um, financial abundance, and they don't feel worthy, perhaps, or maybe you don't. There's somebody here who has toxic friend or family member, but grounding into the Earth Star Chakra, that unity consciousness where you can connect with people, whether they're near or far. Uh, other people are always putting their good vibes up on the, um, the virtual cloud of good feeling. And you can download that energy anytime by tapping into a good message, a good song, or into the garden. Wake up call, awakening to self care. Somebody's doing some stealth tactics and games, this toxic person, but you're protected, your energy's rising, and it's not, it's like the, um, the older brother or sister that would hold you at arm's length, you know, from your forehead, and you just can't, you can't get them. That's what I'm kind of feeling with this Tai Chi rising, and you're just, you're protected, and you're on the right path is all I can say with that. All right, that's it. So take care, guys, and wish you all the best. Take care of yourself. Bye.